I knew you via one picture you shared to me. You were pretty much coming out of the blue, and after that, you placed number second in Mr. Olympia in this newly created division, Classic Physique. That was so evolving, and lately, as we mentioned yesterday, they added weight to you guys. Isn't it a danger for you to be just like regular bodybuilders? Aren't you growing too much? No, absolutely not. Classic physique is classic bodybuilding. So classic bodybuilders of the 70s and 80s era were much heavier than we were allowed to be in classic physique. We still have a lot of weight until we even get close to men's open. In 2016, I was 205 pounds. 2017, 210. Now they're allowing me for my height to be 215 pounds. If you compare that to the golden era, Arnold Schwarzenegger at 245 pounds, in classic physique today, he would have to be 20 pounds lighter at 225. So for me to be an open bodybuilder, we're talking about 40 pounds or more of lean stage muscle. We're nowhere near that. There's also a novelty this year. The very first Arnold Classic. And uh, you will do it actually, is that right? 100%. All right, that's his uh, next uh, show. Last year, I mean, you were in the top five. I uh, mentioned the top five because everybody was so close. And I think everybody agreed with me. They could have pretty much switched you around and everybody would have been perfect. You could have been second, you could have won that show. Nobody would have been upset. Is it a testament that the level already is getting so high at a very high pace? Absolutely, I called it in 2016 when they released Classic Physique Division. I said we'll see a lot of genetic freaks coming out of the woodwork. And this, this division's gonna grow astronomically. Even now, this year, it's grown so much, it's nothing. In the next five years, it'll be 10 times bigger. I don't think that's why I placed further back this year. I didn't bring my best package. And I agree with you, the top five, anybody was in any different position, I don't think anyone would argue. It's that competitive, and everybody in Classic Physique Division brings such a great package. Now, uh, about two months ago, you and me were in, uh, in Kuwait, another Middle East uh, country, so we were together pretty much every day. And I witnessed you being a pretty much a regular person. You can do whatever with me. You can swim, you can drive a supercar, you can run, you can have fun, which is not the case of, of bigger guys. I mean, a, a full grown bodybuilder cannot afford to have a regular lifestyle. And I did forecast that because of this, you guys will appeal more to, the, to these guys, like the, the mainstream, the average Joe going to, to the gym, because he can have a life. By the same token, it's gonna be a high-end champion. Am I right? Absolutely. I mean, all due respect with uh, open bodybuilders, I'm a fan. I'm a bodybuilding fan, and that's how I got into bodybuilding. And it's the extreme. The extreme in any sport, extreme in any aspect in life, is the most, you know, the biggest and the most difficult and, and hardest to balance. Classic physique is a little bit more obtainable for the masses and all the people here that are lovely people I've met at the Dubai Muscle Show. So yes, they like our look and it's more obtainable for them. I met hundreds of classic physique competitors that I competed today. So absolutely, it's more mainstream, like the way men's physique was when it came out. Now, I do know for a fact that you are a very diligent athlete. Uh, all aspects of your game is definitely control, training, cardio, diet, uh, stretching. However, you do have an outside life. You happen to be a very successful entrepreneur. You have your own business. And you being a champion does not deter you from being successful elsewhere. So is it like a, the, the very blueprint that you suggest to, to these young guys? Because I do know for a fact, especially from your Persian fans who look up to you, some of them come to you and tell you, hey, in two years I want to be you. And that dude is like 20 years old, and you pretty much have to open the, the, the same answer that no. I mean, try, I mean, be somebody, and then if you're successful in bodybuilding, then fine, but do not bank solely on your fitness endeavor. Absolutely, bodybuilding is like an artist, you know, very few artists really make it to the top, so it's difficult. But you can't tell somebody not to follow their passion, right? 
for me, everyone's journey is different. For me, I followed bodybuilding and I worked out purely out of love and passion. 22 years I bodybuilded, six meals a day, trained six, seven days a week, carried a gallon of water in high school, and it was for love, it was for passion. And at the age of 33, I competed. So yes, I worked, I'm in real estate. I recommend guys stay in school and have a day job. And if you think after five, 10 years of giving it your all, you have what it takes, then so be it, go forward. But um, you know, it's, it's difficult to be the best in the world at, at anything, let alone a sport as, as strenuous as bodybuilding. Obviously, uh, you knew me through my blogs, and quite controversial sometimes, I'm lately controversial from the bubble gun, and for the longest time, I refrain from calling all our bodybuilders athletes, because for me, most of them do not reflect that letter to them, right? They're just too big, they cannot move about. However, you guys have not long ago you athletes. Do you actually consider yourself being an athlete to large percent? Absolutely, I've been an athlete all my life. I was a martial artist for 15 years. I played American football in high school. I ran track. Um, I still try to do sprints. I still try to stay agile. I think, you know, looking good is great, but having a healthy body and being able to be mobile and move around and walk up a flight of stairs without losing your breath is key. Right. And although you are one of the best bodybuilders and classic physique guys in the world, I do know for a fact that you judge yourself quite severely and you think that you don't have good genetics. You think that you are average or probably subpar, yet you are successful among the top guys. What does it do to you? This and this. I think I have good genetics. I think anybody that makes it to the stage and the pro level has good genetics. But I don't consider myself the genetic, genetic elite like the guys that I'm competing with. I've worked very hard. It took me 23 years to be sitting here beside you uh, and doing what I'm doing. But um, it's the mental toughness that's needed. I've seen people with phenomenal physiques and great genetics come and go. If you don't have the mental toughness and you're not able to sustain it, you will not last in this sport. Now, one of your goals happens to be Mr. Danny Hester, who happens also to be the very first Mr. Olympia, historically. And he did it when he was pretty much in the other half of the 40s. I think he was like 46, right? Okay, so you're pretty much a decade younger than him. Do you foresee yourself still competing and being with us here in these shows a decade from now? I don't know. If I was to say yes or no, I would say yes. That being said, I'm just getting started. I'm not going anywhere. I uh, plan to be the best in the world at what I do and hold that, tote, that title for many years to come. Ten years? I don't know. We'll see We'll see what the division has to hold and, and, and what happens and how my career goes forward. But I've been doing this for two decades. I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, I don't see myself slowing down or stopping anytime soon. How many shows have you done so far? Three? Bodybuilding shows? Four. Okay. And I do know for a fact you're a perfectionist. Each time you meet a persona or the bodybuilding, you ask questions, basically you debate things, you try to find the proper sweet spot, the proper formula to basically have, you know, to, to, to come on always, I mean, hopefully, find the recipe to pinpoint your best shape. At this stage right now, 2017, do you think that your next show will be your best because you got it now? I think I will be astronomically better. It's an ever-evolving sport for you and as an individual. It's a science. My body changes and my protocols and my approach have to change as well. I think I will bring my best package to date in the 2018 Arnold Classic. That being said, I will continue to progress and get better year to year. And it's a learning process. Anytime you think you know everything and you figured it out, your progress is going to stop. Okay, now up to a peculiar question. Obviously right now you're sponsored by a big company named Divertas, and we're both pretty much the same age. Can you convey to your fans the difference between the supplements nowadays and the one we used to eat, you and me, two decades ago? Let's talk about the whey protein. Can you tell them how was the whey protein two decades ago? Not good at all. It wasn't pure. It would upset your stomach. Digestion rate was lower. If anyone, you guys that follow me and know my, my career thus far, I was without a sponsor for the first four years and that was my choice because I won't have uh, a 
a sponsorship or someone stand beside me or behind me that I don't believe in and that doesn't sell quality supplements. You see, what you put in your body is the most important thing when it comes to body. The most important thing, I would say, it's more important than training. And a lot of the supplements that are being sold out there are not the best quality. So it's more of a, you know, you think you're doing the right thing, but it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing in your body. And the reason that I decided to work with Diamond Ties is because of their reputation. They didn't start last year or the year before. They've been around a long time. There's, their protein and their supplements have been tested by outside companies. So I feel confident telling people, yes, take ISO 100. It's one of the best proteins literally on the market. You have to read the ingredients. There's no secret. You turn around any diametized product and you read the ingredients and it tells you what's in it and it tells you the dosage and the grams. So there's no proprietary blends that you have to kind of guess what's in there. I don't put those types of things in my body. Never have and I never will. Right, so most people agree that, you know, they're nostalgic of the golden era when it comes to their physique. They want to go back to the 70s, the 80s and so on and so forth. Me, I tell them, you guys are lucky, you youngsters, because they live in the very golden era when it comes to the supplements. Never did we have such good quality, some good uh, positive competition. It is pretty much the epitome of supplement industry. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. The quality, the technology has gotten so high and so far, but there's still a simplicity that needs to be followed. That doesn't mean that there's these astronomical, amazing supplements that are going to transform your physique overnight. It's still the basics. It's just the quality and the accessibility has increased. I know that you're a fan of Dorian Yates, right? The fact that Dorian, for all intents and purposes, did not have a pre-workout in his era. He was taking juice, or a juice for that matter, pre and intro workout. Would you agree that the pre-workout is a revolution that changed the game for amateurs and also for you pros? Is it important? It is, absolutely, but a lot of pre-workouts in the market have very, very strong stimulants that are not even really FDA approved. And what would happen with those is, one, your body adapts to them, so you need more and more and more, and it'll burn out your receptors. So once you stop, which you always have to, you always have to cycle supplements, because your body gets used to them. Once you stop, you, you, nothing else is gonna give you that boost. So they definitely do help, but you have to be careful what you put in your body, and again, when you turn the label around, they're proprietary blends, so you don't know how much. If you turn around pre-woe by Dimatize, it tells you how many milligrams of caffeine, 300, and it gives you the grams of every other ingredient listed one at a time. You know what you're putting in your stomach. So me and you, we connected via social media. Most of these guys here know you through social media as well. How important is social media in your venture? How, how big is the importance you put in your social media to connect with your fans? and with the, with the industry as a whole, the fitness industry. Well, for me, social media has nothing to do with competing or placing in a show. Social media serves two purposes, to be in touch with my fans, to be able to answer questions, and to give them a little bit of insight in my daily, weekly routines and, and how I get ready for shows, and it's a marketing tool. But it is not necessary to be a good bodybuilder. It's not needed to compete. It's two different things that has become very, very close, there's a thin line between it now, but it's, it's, it's you know, it's marketing. All right, my final question will be related to uh, this place right here, this spot, the Middle East. As a matter of fact, we met, we met both, and it happened to be in the Middle East countries, and you happen to be from the country next door, the other side of the Gulf, namely Persia. How do you assess, basically, the, the grand passion that we're feeling so far in this region of the world? Is it like a new Mecca, a new hotspot for fitness? You know, I've been asked that question a lot lately, and I would say no. Bodybuilding has been big in the Middle East for many, many years, decades. Iran bodybuilding has been around for centuries, but because the advent of social media, we're starting to see the athletes from Kuwait, from Iran, from Dubai. So no, it's nothing new. Uh, I think Iran and the Middle East breeds some of the best bodybuilders, and now, God rest his soul, um, Beitola Maswar passed away. He was one of the best 212 competitors. We have Hadi Chopin now, myself. Bobak is another 212 competitor. So it's just a matter of being able to compete in the States or other countries. Um, you know, people in these countries, it's a little bit more difficult for them uh, to travel and to get a visa than it is for someone like myself from the United States. Papa Arash, always a pleasure to talk to you. It's so easy. 
God bless you. Thank Talk you, brother. It was my pleasure. It was proper, wasn't it?